Key concept 11, target A. Yeah, YouTube channel is at Mad Videos by Mr. A. Uh, make sure you subscribe so that way you know when new videos come out. Hit the notification button as well. Um, I'll be making videos for Key Concept 6 through Key Concept 14 for Integrated Math 1 Core and Honors. Okay, so Key Concept 11 target A starts with an introduction to quadratic functions. Uh, we started the year with linear functions in the form of f of x equals mx plus b. Then we moved on to exponential functions, which had a few different equations. And now we're finally looking at quadratics. So this will be the last type of function that we look at. So um, standard form for a quadratic is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is known as a leading coefficient. Remember, coefficient just means a number in front of a variable. Um, leading one because it's the first one in the equation. Okay. When you graph it, you're gonna have a sort of like a U-shaped graph, either upwards or downwards. That is known as a parabola, okay? A couple of vocab to know about it. The axis of symmetry is a line drawn so that both sides are mirror images. So that's basically gonna be drawn something like that, halfway there. So the left side looks exactly like the right side, okay? Um, vertex is gonna be the highest or lowest point of the graph of a quadratic. If we have a parabola that is opening upwards, this right here is going to be our vertex, and it's going to be known as a minimum, which means that is the smallest y value that the graph will ever go to. If we have a parabola like the one at the bottom that opens downwards, this high point right here is the vertex, which is also known as a maximum, which basically tells you, tells you that that's the highest y value that graph will touch. Okay. Uh, notice, for example, two. Let's say that ordered pair right here is, um, let's say that it's two negative two, okay? The axis of symmetry will basically be the line x equals two, okay? Because let's say that's the x value one, that's the x value two, that's where it cuts to, all right? <clears throat> now, uh, the next two points here says, so they're talking about A, the leading coefficient. There's a way to know whether or not your, your parabola is gonna open up or down without even actually having to graph it. If A is positive, so if A is greater than zero, your parabola is going to open up, which means your vertex is going to be a minimum. And so you're going to have something that like the top graph. If A is negative, so if A is less than zero, parabola is going to open down like this one, and your vertex will be a maximum. Okay. Uh, next example, we're going to be calculating domain and range. We talked about domain and range before in a previous key concept. Domain is basically what are all what are the the list of x values that are included in the function. It won't be all of them. It'll be some of them. Range is which y values are included in the function. So keep in mind when we're talking about domain, we're talking about how far left and to the right your graph will go. When we're talking about range, we're talking about how far up and down your graph will go. Okay. Now, when we want to include values, we're going to go ahead and use uh, brackets. Okay. These tell me that we want to include it. If we do not want to include them, we're going to use parentheses. Okay. Another thing you'll also see too. For values that we want to include, we're going to use the less than or equal to or the greater than or equal to. Remember, the equal means we're going to include it. If we want to exclude them, which means we do not want them, we're going to use just the less than or greater than symbols. Okay? Example 1A. Use the graph to answer the following question. So, uh, first one we're asked is identify the axis of symmetry. Uh, so, basically, at what line, at what value is the graph sort of split in half? So we can see that if we were to draw a dashed line here, that would be my axis of symmetry. <clears throat> and that is going to be the x value 1. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 1, the line. So if we were to graph it. Okay. And <clears throat> for these parabolas that open up and down, the axis of symmetry will always start with x equals something because it's basically going to open up or down, so vertically. Um, and the only way we'll get halfway is like that. B, identify the sign of the leading coefficient. Now, we have a problem that opens down, which means A must be negative. And just a little quick explanation, because the parabola opens downward. Okay. 
and the problem and open up words, um, it would have been positive. <clears throat> C says identify the vertex, so it's either the lowest or highest point. When A is negative and you have a problem that opens up, up downwards, the vertex is actually considered a maximum because that's the highest point. So that green point right there is our vertex, which is the ordered pair 1, 1. D says identify the coordinate of the y intercept. So where does your parabola cross? The y axis. Here's the y axis. Um, this parabola crosses it or intersects it at that point, which is actually the origin. So 0, 0. Example 1 and continue. Uh, we're using the same graph, but now we're answering questions E through H. E says identify the coordinates of the x intercept. So where does your graph cross the x axis? So Here's the x-axis, it would be this point and this point. Now, interesting thing, the point on the left, right here, this one, is actually a y-intercept as well. So, it's the ordered pair 0, 0, and then the one on the right is the ordered pair 2, 0. Okay, <clears throat> next question, or uh, F, state the domain using inequality notation. So, remember from previous key concept, domain means we're looking at the x values. Now, they want us using inequality notation, which means they want us using the less than, greater than, less than, or equal to, greater than, or equal to symbols. On the left of this, we're going to put the smallest x value that the graph uses. On the right, we're going to go with the biggest x value the graph uses. So, if we were to go to the left, you notice that the x value from the vertex is going downwards. But at the same time, it's also slowly going to the left. So, eventually, it'll touch the x value too negative three, negative four, negative five, and it's gonna keep going towards basically negative infinity. So the smallest x value that we'll use is negative infinity. As we go to the right, notice too that the graph, again, going downwards, but it's also going to the right. So eventually it's gonna hit the x value four, five, six, and it's gonna to go towards positive infinity. Okay. Now, infinity uh, is not really a number, it's more of a concept. It's basically the largest number out there. Uh, in this case, let's say you thought you found positive infinity, right? You found the biggest number you've been adding for years. I can then just tell you, well, what if I add one step? You know, and I just found a number that's even bigger than the one you found, and so on and so on. So we can't ever really reach them. However, the domain, the x value that we're going to use is going to be between negative infinity and positive infinity. So the domain will be larger than negative infinity, but smaller than positive infinity. Not equal to them because we can't reach it. Now, another way you could write this down. Ideally, I want it like this in orange um, because that's us using inequality notation. But you can also write it like this using parentheses. Negative infinity because we can't reach it and it's the smallest. Positive infinity in parentheses again because we can't reach. Or another way to show basically all those numbers would be to put this symbol R, which means all real numbers. Again, every number that we're familiar with because we haven't talked about imaginary numbers just yet. <clears throat> For G, we're looking at state the range, so Y in the middle. So now we're looking at how far down and up you can go, okay? On the left, what's the smallest value? So if this graph were to keep going downwards, what Y value would be the smallest it touches? It's going towards negative infinity. So we're gonna put negative infinity on the left. And then how far up can it go? It stops right here at the Y value one. It can touch negative infinity, but it could be bigger than it. And it actually does touch one, and it could be less than one. Okay, and this time we're also, we're actually including the equal symbol underneath it because it actually does touch one. A couple other ways we can write this, if we're using parentheses and brackets, smallest on the left, negative infinity, because it can't touch, and the right, positive one, and we would include a bracket to show that my graph actually does reach positive one. Um, it would not be all real numbers, but I could also write it like this. Y is all the numbers less than or equal to 1. Yeah. Last question for this one. <clears throat> it says identify the end behavior. So identify what your graph looks like when it reaches towards the right end and the left end. So the first question says, as X reaches positive infinity. So as X is going to the right, F of X, also known as Y, what's Y leaning towards? So Y is leaning towards negative infinity. Okay, the next question, as x goes towards negative infinity, so as x goes to the left, what is y going towards? It's going towards negative infinity as well.
Example 1B. Um, this one will go a little bit fast. I'm just going to put up answer so you can check your work. A says identify the x in the symmetry. That would be the equation x equals 2. Identify the sine of the leading coefficient. That would be a is positive. C says identify the vertex. That would be the ordered pair 2, negative 4. Identify the coordinate of the y-intercept. Once again, it's 0, 0. Don't assume that that will always be the case because it will not. Moving on to the next one. Example 1B continued. Now you're looking at E. Identify the coordinates of the x-intercepts. That would be, again, 0, 0, the origin, and 4, 0. Keep in mind, it will not always have an x-intercept. Sometimes it will just have one, and sometimes it will have none. F, state the domain. You'll notice that with most quadratic functions, Unless I restrict it somehow or I give you only a piece of it, it's going to end up basically being all real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity. Uh, then the next one, state the range. So smallest y value, negative 4. It actually touches it. And then it's going towards positive infinity, which we can't touch. H, identify the end behavior. As x goes towards positive infinity to the right, Y is leaning towards positive infinity as well. As X goes towards negative infinity to the left, Y is going towards positive infinity once again. Example 2a, graph f of x equals 2x squared minus 8x plus 6, and identify the following features. Um, so we're just going to use our calculator for this. You'll notice I added a couple of screenshots in the table. None of that will be in your notes to begin with. That will be stuff that you calculate yourself. We've graphed on the TI Inspire calculator before already, so I'm hoping we already remember how to do this. You're basically pressing the home button, and then you can either uh, click the actual word that says graph, or click the icon that looks like a graph. Might not be a bad idea, too, to go with new document, and do not save whatever's been there before. Um, keep in mind, to use the calculator, you're going to be looking for the red TI Inspire icon, student TI Inspire icon on your laptop. Click it, give it a chance to load. Um, keep in mind, if you do not see this calculator right away, uh, you want to go ahead and click this icon right there. If you don't, it's going to look maybe just like a couple pages or it's going to look like a, a file folder. So you want to make sure you hit that, that calculator icon so that the calculator pops up. And then you already know that in the tab button, f of x shows up. I think it'll say f1 of x, which just lets you know that it's the first function you're graphing. You're typing in 2x raised to the second power, then get out of the exponent and put minus 8x, not negative, plus 6. Um, and you should get the graph that you see right here. Okay. Now, we want table values because I don't want you to guess the value. So you're going to go ahead and click Control, which is this button right here, and then the letter T. And that should give you the table. Okay. Now, this graph that I gave you only goes from negative 10 to positive 10. So go up and down your scroll bar to figure out what values actually fit. Once you find those, I will expect you to create a table, even though there's not a table there. Create it yourself with all the possible x and y values that actually fit. If we were to go to negative 1, you would notice that negative 1, I believe, goes to 15 or something like that, but it's too big to include in the table. So I'm just going to graph the points that are on the table. So starting with 0, 6. 0, 6 would be this point right here. Uh, 1, 0. 2, negative 2. 3, 0. And then 4, 6. And you'll notice, actually, if you haven't done so yet, that after the vertex, the y values are all the same. That's because they're symmetry. That's the axis of symmetry. <clears throat> and we're just going to go ahead and connect the points. Um, notice in the graph, it looks more like a U than it does a V. So please don't give me a sharp V-looking graph. Um, make sure it curves a little bit. I'm not asking for perfection, but... It should curve a little bit and then draw arrows at each end to let me know that the graph goes on. 
Now, A says identify the coordinate at the maximum or minimum. Because the graph goes up, that means the vertex will be a minimum, and which will be basically this point right here, which is 2, negative 2. So I will want you to identify if it's a maximum or minimum like I did, and then give me the order pair that goes to that. The next thing is identify the coordinates of the x-intercept. So what is across the x-axis? Right there at 1, 0. And the other one is at 3, 0. Okay. Since we are using the calculator to graph these, I will definitely be looking for a table. I do not need the screenshots of the calculator, but I do need to see the table to show me that, sure enough, you included all the values that you could. And I will be checking your graph for every single point to make sure it's obvious that each of those points from your table is actually graphed on the, uh, graphed on the graph provided um, accurately.